Okay, this video is going to be about the plot type histogram. A histogram is generally used for one numeric variable. A histogram is really actually quite important for us because it visualizes so much information. A histogram visualizes measures of center, like where generally are the data located. Now, in terms of like numerical statistics, that would refer to the mean or median, which in a weird case, I'm not giving us strict definitions for before this video. I'm saving them till later because I think it's the intuition behind mean and median that are more important for us here. And I think a histogram will really help us capture that idea. Uh, a histogram helps us visualize measures of variation, like the standard deviation. We should think in most cases in the world of statistics, not all data are the same number. Like you'll often get, if you're measuring, I don't know, fish weights, then not all fish are going to weigh exactly 511 pounds. Some are going to be heavier than others. Some are going to be uh, lighter than others. Because of that, there's going to be width or variation to your data. The numeric term for that is standard deviation. It's actually a somewhat complicated calculation, so I'm going to, again, try to introduce us to the intuition first. And a histogram also generalizes or visualizes for us skew. That is kind of the asymmetricness of the data set or the variable. And I'm going to try to define that one for us uh, after we go through a quick example, uh, hand-drawn example. OK, so a histogram puts observations into, well, I don't know what happened to my words there, but we'll just go ahead and clean them up as we go. Can we even, oh, looks nasty. OK, histogram puts observations into some number, I can't write and talk at the same time, some number of bins, a number specifically chosen by you, the researcher. So that is to say that this number chosen by you, the researcher, is subjective. But we'll get back to that once we dive into a more complete example inside R. So here we go. I'm still on my made-up example of tuna, and this time we have a data frame that consists of seven different tuna whose weights we have recorded, and I'm guessing that these are pounds here. Notice in my data frame I am not putting the units. You can mess yourself up in R if you try to put the units directly inside your data frame. Put units in another file in the same folder as your data set. Okay, so I'm just telling you that weight here is in pounds. Now, if we were going to make a histogram, we'd have an x and y axis. And on the x axis goes weight. And you should always put the units on your plots. And in this case, what we're going to do is start looking at the range of your observations for the numeric variable weight. Notice we have at smallest the observation 507, and at largest, the observation 548. So a histogram is going to capture that entire range of your data set. So I'm going to just kind of blindly guess that our histogram is going to start somewhere at 500 and end somewhere at 550. And now these bins capture the number of observations that fall within each bin. So I'm going to create bins of size 10 for like 10 pounds. So that's going to go 500 to 510, 510 to 520, 520 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. And that almost worked out kind of nicely for me. OK, so how many observations do I have within the bin from 500 to 510? I'm going to go with, we just have one. So this bin's height is going to be one. And how about in the bin 510.1 to 520? Let's see, we've got 511, 517. So we've got two 
within that next bin. Now the next bin, all the bins are the same width. And since I've chosen about 10 for my bin width, this next one's gonna go from 520, just past 520 to like, I don't know, 520.01 or 0.1 or something like this, 520 to 530. So let's see, we've got 525. So just one here in the middle, just that 525. Let's see, our next bin is going to go from 530 to 540. We've got 532 and 534, so that's going to be two again. And in the last bin, we just have one. So our histogram is going to represent on the y-axis the count, the number of observations that fit within each bin. Okay. So the only real difference between a histogram and a bar chart is the type of variable on the x-axis. For a histogram, the x-axis is numeric. For a bar chart, the x-axis is categorical. Okay, so that's going to be the biggest distinction between histogram and bar charts. But on both of them, the y-axis is standard as counts. Now, I've highlighted the word skew because I specifically want you to add that to your uh, course notes in this video. And skew is going to help us uh, describe the asymmetry of our histogram. So if you look at this histogram, there doesn't really seem to be more data off to the left or more data off to the right. There, it's basically kind of symmetric, we'd call it. So this is an example of like no skew. But I think what would help is if we gave some examples and a definition of skew. Skew describes the tail of a histogram. So if you had a tail sticking off to the right, you'd have right skew. And a quick and ugly example of right skew would look like this. Do you see how the bins kind of have a tail that go off to the right? That would be a histogram defining a variable with right skew. Let's try a similarly ugly quick example of left skew. So here, I'm just going to emphasize that in this case, the tail goes off to the left. So this would be a variable with left skew. The reason skew is so important is it really kind of shapes how well our models are going to do later on in this class. And further, it describes for us a relationship between the mean and the median. When skew describes the tail, not the bulk. That's a good note, maybe a nota bona. When skew describes the tail, not necessarily the bulk, the tail here is going to help shape for us a relationship between the mean and the median. I'm going to show us that in an example in R as we go along and make some much nicer looking histograms using some data sets already built into R. Okay, so inside R, I'm going to work in the console because I want to develop some code before I actually save it. I want to make sure my code is right and it's doing what I want. And then once I get a really good line of code, I will save it into my course notes. So down here in the console, I want to make some plots. And in R, we're going to use the library ggplot2 to make some plots. So in order to use the function ggplot, we have to load the library ggplot2 first. So as before, I'm going to use the example tooth growth. But instead of pulling up the help file, I'm going to remind us that we can look at just the first six observations of a data set by calling the function named head on the data frame of interest here, tooth growth. Since I'm make, interested in making a histogram, I'm interested in making a plot of one numeric variable. 
len for the length of the teeth in these, I think they're guinea pigs, is the best choice for a numeric variable. Dose is numeric, but you should be careful with that because there's really only like three values or so that dose takes on. So that's not going to be a very interesting numeric variable for us. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to make a plot using the function ggplot. And I hope you'll start seeing a pattern in this function ggplot. The first argument is always the data frame that contains the data you want to plot. Then you specify the aesthetic, which is which variables go on to which axes. And in this case, for our histogram, we have one numeric variable with the name len. And then we will specify the geometry of a histogram. And R will yell at you if you do not specify the number of bins. A good default choice is 31. I don't really know why 31 comes out, but 31 is a reasonable choice. If you don't specify anything, ggplot will yell at you and it will choose 30. Try it out. Get rid of this argument here and then hit enter. I'm going to leave this in here because I don't want R to yell at me, but it won't break if it yells at you. So here is our first histogram of the tooth length of guinea pigs. And it looks a little funky because there's all these kind of gaps in our data. And in fact, those gaps don't really exist. Those gaps are kind of telling us that we specified too many bins. So for example, let me make this extreme. Too many bins is going to give you really ugly data like this. And it's not going to tell you much about the shape of the data. Now, similarly, you can specify too few bins. And again, it's not going to tell you about the shape of the data. 31 is a reasonable start, but if you still have kind of these ugly gaps in here, let's just start decreasing it. And this is what I mean by the number of bins is subjective. I still think there's too many gaps in there, so I'm just going to start guessing some smaller number of bins until I'm satisfied with the plot that I like. That's pretty good. Let's see what 7 looks like. Uh, okay, somewhere right in the range between 7 to 9, I'm going to hold on 9, I mean on 8, is totally reasonable. This is a reasonable histogram because it shows us that there's really no skew. It's pretty symmetric, generally. It shows us that meh, the average tooth length is somewhere around 20, and the variation really kind of goes from like 10 to 30. I don't really want to say it goes from 15 to 35 or anything because those bins, the edges of the bins might be misleading. So really we kind of have um, some variation in this data that exists between 10 and 30 and most on average, the tooth length is about 20. Now watch this, look how clever this is in R. We can ask R to calculate the mean of a numeric variable for us. So in this case, our numeric variable lives in the data set tooth growth, and we will extract with the dollar sign operator the variable named len, because that's our numeric variable. Look, 18, almost 19. And in fact, that's what the histogram is showing us, that the mean tooth length is really somewhere right around here. Now, I guess 20, but that's pretty close to basically 19. And look, we can do a similar thing with the median. Look, I didn't have to change much in there because median is so close to the word mean. Also, basically 19. I'm really not going to uh, get too upset about the decimal places here. Because this histogram has no skew, it's symmetric, generally symmetric, the mean and the median are basically the same number. That is almost always going to be the case, that when there is no skew in a data set, the mean and the median will be very close. OK, let's clear this and try one more data set. The data set chick weight, 
which I'm not going to pull up the help file again. I'll let you figure out how to do that much based on other videos. Instead, I'm going to pull up the first six observations of the data frame named chip weight using the function named head. And in this case, weight is a good numeric variable to make a histogram with. Now, if you want a challenge, I encourage you to pause the video now and try to replicate the code from earlier using this new data frame chick weight and the variable weight. See if you can come up with that histogram on your own. When you come back to this video, we'll see that ggplot is the function we're going to use. And then within parentheses, the data frame comes first. And then the aesthetic from which you specify which variables you want on which axes. If you just put one variable, it will default to the x-axis. Then we'll specify the geometry of a histogram, and unless you want R to yell at you, you'll specify the number of bins you want. 31 is not a bad choice here. I'm just going to try 21 just for, you know, messing around for fun's sake. You're not going to upset R if you try a few different values. Yeah, these are all pretty much fine with me. We can see, generally, there is large... Wait, what kind of skew is that? Does it describe the tail or the bulk? Which does skew describe, the tail or the bulk? Skew describes the tail. So this is a great example of a right skewed variable. These chickens' weights have many more chickens who weigh near 100, whatever units this is. I should have pulled up the help file. Dang. Oh, well. Has many chickens that weigh near 100 and very few chickens that weigh near 300 or 350. On average, I'm going to guess chickens weigh something near 200 pounds. But look, we can do as we did before. Ask R to calculate the mean of the variable weight that lives inside the data frame chick weight. 121. Okay, so I was a little off on my 200 guess, but that's okay. And similarly, we can ask R to calculate the median of this variable weight inside the data frame chick weight. Notice now that the mean and the median are quite different. This is a feature of right skewed data. Anytime a variable is right skewed, the mean will be greater than the median. And that's the intuition I want you all to keep between the mean and the median. Anytime there's right skew, the mean is greater than the median. Anytime there's left skew, the mean is less than the median. And that's a point I'm going to come back to again and again in this class. And I'll try to give us some intuition on it when we get to the definitions of mean and medians. But for now, this is a great histogram. We can see the relationship between means and medians because of the right skewed of this uh, variable weight. And this is a great history. I really like it.